Welcome everyone to the Kindle Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Yesterday's action exploded through the 3100 level, trading as high as 3130 before finding resistance. There was an event that occurred that I will discuss in the technical section. It's going to lead to a minor correctional phase. While the markets are still expanding and strong, we're seeing some evidence that we're hitting a resistance point that might be more significant. Market sentiment was set by the ADP report that came in much better than expected, only showing 2.7 million jobs losses versus the expected of 9 million. We're likely to continue to see these type of reports come in. We've got the unemployment claims coming in today, expecting 1.9 million. If they come in a little better, that may keep a positive tone, eliminate any possibilities even for a minor correction. As this week unfolds and we get closer to the unemployment numbers on Friday, the market sentiment is likely to remain very strong. I still don't see any probabilities of a major decline from here. We could see a minor pullback but nothing major is likely to happen from this position. It's amazing that the NASDAQ finished up 7.9% for the year. The S&P is only down 3.3%. The Russell's down 13. That's been one of the weaker segments in the market is the small caps. The small caps are starting to show some promise. If you didn't see Wednesday's live stream, watch the replay. There's a number of things that I talked about that'll be helpful in understanding more details of the market configuration. But there's no doubt that the market sentiment is very strong. We know we have the backstop of the Fed. There's a lot of things going on. One of the things that I did notice, which I discussed in the technical section tonight, is that the yield curve is steepening and the 10-year notes are starting to see some upside, which is a very healthy sign. I go into detail on that here shortly. Just like in March, it was hard to be bullish and see the optimism. It's now hard to see the pessimism. But I do believe, as I've talked about many times on the channel before, that there will be a reckoning with the fundamentals. The fundamentals may not be as bad as projected, and we won't really know for at least another quarter. Some months ago, I talked about that by June, we'd have an understanding of what we're dealing with. It's obvious that the Fed's pumping of money and filling that gap has worked, at least for the time being. There's a lot of folks that believe we'll see a secondary sell-off. I don't see that at the moment. In fact, the technicals suggest that's not likely. It would be at least another one to three months before we'd even be in a position to see any type of rollover. So maybe as we come into September or even October, we would be at a place where we could see some retracement of this rally wherever it's going. But make no mistake, this market has got some serious momentum behind it. It's not likely to reverse at the moment, and I expect to see the markets remain stable and continue to move up toward potentially the 3300 level. Let's take a look at the charts and see what they're telling us for Thursday. Taking a look at the S&P cash market, I've been discussing how to use the market grid. We had an event happen on Wednesday where the market closed above the RXT level or the extreme projection for the day. Now that number was 31.1770. The close was 31.22.87. And the rule around this, if the market closes above the extreme for the day, the next two to three sessions will be negative. Or they'll go into a sideways to downward pattern and typically what they'll do will move down toward the bottom end of the market grid. For today that will be 3107 to 3099 which is also going to represent moving back toward the 200 day moving average. This configuration suggests while we're still seeing some stronger numbers and the markets moving up above the 3100 level there is going to be some resistance between the 31.32, we printed 31.30.94 yesterday. There's still some potential upside you can see here on the market grid. 31.38 is R2, 
is R1. So it's telling us that the pattern that's evolving here is starting to see some resistance. We're going to continue to move up in this channel, which suggests that we're going to stay above the S2 number, which is 3107. And then 3130, 3138 is going to be the top end. If we did print 3138, that would be a new high in the sequence. Most likely, if we were to print that, we would fall back. Now, overnight, we're seeing some weakness. We're down about a third of 1%, not a big deal, but we are seeing some selling. As I mentioned, after the close above the 3117 level at 3122, that suggests a two, possibly three day sideways with, with a downward bias. Now, if it takes out R2 today, 3138, then it's just going to continue on 3146, 3153. As I discussed in yesterday's video, the upper range is at 3132 to the 3159 level. So everything's in line for an extreme to be put in. We're likely to see a consolidation slight move down in the next couple of days. If we did break above 3159, the next number is 3182. Still uh, resistance overhead. There's still a, a solid uptrend. Everything is telling us that the markets are going to move higher. We should see this thing start to trade in a sideways range. We'll see how, how they come in. When the London folks come in, they've been bidding them up. We'll see if that happens again tonight. But for now, expect this market to kind of move in this sideways range. The final market I'll cover tonight is the 10-year treasuries ticked up to 0.76 yesterday. They're starting to show signs that they're going to bottom. I talked about this many weeks ago that the Fed does not want to see negative rates. And I'm going to show you something that's been going on from the, the day that the Fed came in and announced the unlimited QE. Now take a look at the yield curve. You'll see here this is the 1030 spread. So this is the 30 versus the 10. You can see it's just rocketing. We're seeing the spreads widen out quite a bit. This is a very positive sign that the bond market is pretty healthy. So you want to see this type of steepening. You don't want to see the flattening. The 1030s are a really good place to watch this. So this is, this is a healthy sign that there are things going on in the bond market that suggest stability, and this is likely to continue. This is the end of the broadcast. Thank you so much for everybody that showed up at the live cast yesterday. I really enjoyed it. Make sure you watch the replay. Thanks again.